morning. Uh, just a little closer, Dr. Rahim, sure. so you can get more close to our listeners. And um, uh, Dr. Haley, please uh, tell us how long you've been associated with University of Wollongong, Dubai. Yes, I've been at University of Wollongong for the last five years. Uh, I was previous. I was previously at uh, the University of Bradford in UK, and I've been here now five years. Okay, and uh, how the experience has been, especially, uh, you know, the education sector in UAE, Dr. Haley, because it would be nice to know from you since you have worked in UK and here as well. Oh, it's very nice. It's very interesting. I think the thing is, uh, the UAE is very keen on education and I think we see that in the students as they're coming through from school as well. Very interested in technologies, very interested in new things, very interested in, in achieving the best in themselves. So we're seeing that at uh, University of Wollongong we see students that are very excited and we try to get them engaged into practical skills we can then take them further so like things like even entrepreneurship is there you know. So and I find that exciting. What's your story uh, Dr. Rahim? Um, my story starts from uh, mechanical engineering, actually, and I had uh, quite a bit of desire to create robotics and mechatronic systems. Wow. And uh, I did my master's and PhD in uh, UAW in Australia and worked there as biomedical engineering lecturer. Now I'm joining to UAWD uh, with a desire to establish, uh, outline some uh, mechatronics uh, degree. Wow, that's fascinating. Which is uh, really, really exciting. We have quite a number of projects uh, coming within UAWD, we have uh, very practical uh, things for students, hands-on things for students, as we are uh, communicating out there, uh, instead of you know applying only theories, but we apply theories to real applications, hands-on Which is projects. so important, yes, exactly. practical. Practical things for the students. So we are trying to equip our students to become the industry leaders out there, right, to, be right. walk, to be able to walk out of university with a nice transition to industry with confidence, mm. having these skills. So practical things are the key factor with our mechatronics degree. Indeed, so uh, already the courses are there available for quite some time or recently introduced? Um, uh, yes, uh, we have courses actually, uh, for instance, me mechanical engineering is, is there, electrical engineering is there, we have computer engineering, computer science. Mm -hmm. But now mechatronics engineering being established, which is kind of an intersection of all these uh, engineering disciplines to serve something is more compact, more concise, more on the point to understand, you know, diverse skills. So much better movies in the future, <laughs> even better. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. We want, we want our students to be confident out there to, you know, be able to speak on these all different levels of platforms. Right. So let's talk about mechatronics. You know, we have a vague idea from sci-fi movies, as uh, Sobia mentioned. But if you could, you know, simplify a little bit about mechatronics uh, engineering, what is it really about? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's an interesting question because there, there can be a lot of confusion in parents' minds and in children's minds, what is this area? And of course, the impression we get is uh, you know from the movies and definitely that's exciting to see a, a, a human a robot walking around right. the reality is much more like for example when you get a driverless vehicle mm -hmm. it's effectively a robot that is making decisions mm -hmm. you know you tell it where to go but everything else it makes the decisions Correct. so that's a serving robot you know it serves us you can imagine what that will do for our, us as a community you know we'll have less traffic jams <laughs> so it's it's and or, less or accidents. no accidents actually yeah that, that was the main idea and less fines <laughs> less yes. fines <laughs> yeah the robot will pay <laughs> yeah, so 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 I think mechatronics is kind of towards that area in in the sense that we already have it a bit, but it's expanding. So mm -hmm. the robots are expanding into everything we do today, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily see it as right. a machine walking down the road. You know, right. it may be a little bit more pervasive that it's just there behind the scenes. So Correct. even in the supermarkets, Correct. you notice robots are are there scanning the codes, and you don't notice right. it, but they're there nowadays. And they're telling you know what to order automatically. It's mm -hmm. all an automated system, Correct. you know. So it's so artificial intelligence is different from, uh, or maybe uh, go hand in hand. I, I, they go hand in hand actually. Maybe I'll ask uh, Rahim, my colleague. Certainly, um, I will. I will start from mechatronics you know, mm -hmm. towards AI. Um, you know, uh, mechatronics basically like uh, you know as I mentioned, uh, 
it's mechanical, electrical, computer science, computer engineering, so on. But the question here is specialization, mm -hmm. because people may think about, okay, instead of uh, studying only mechanical or instead of studying electrical, mm -hmm. you know, should I be studying uh, mechatronics, which will amalgamate all these disciplines, mm -hmm. which seems like, uh, you know, harder than, you know, a single degree. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's not harder than single degree, but it's more about like, you are uh, building on T-skills, okay. which is basically, uh, who don't know about the T-skills is, you develop certain skills in a, in a level of average, mm -hmm. so that you find out yourself, what's your taste? Nice. For instance, you study mechatronics, mm -hmm. then you find the taste of uh, AI is serving for you, Correct. then you start building on your AI skills, right. then you can have mechatronics degree, but specialize in AI. So Amazing. you will be equipped with mechanical background, you will equip with electrical background, you will have computer science, uh, computer engineering background, you can develop electrical and uh, electronic hardware and software, plus then you have you know, desire to develop these things using AI. So, so, Dr. Rahim, if the console is not working, can they bring it to you and you can fix it? <laughs> while um, to be honest, I will, I will answer this question <laughs> I was asked uh, when I was studying mechanical engineering very long time ago. Okay. Um, with an answer is, uh, the, the question actually was uh, whether uh, I can fix all the machines. All because, the machines. Because I'm studying mechanical engineering. Yeah, you that should be able to. I you are a specialist. Exactly. Yeah. But as we say, we are not mechanical technicians. Ah. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But yes, if you have any questions about mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, it's an amalgamation of that. It's called mechatronics. Yes. If you have any questions, you can always give us a call. That's right. And uh, how intense is the program? And uh, University of Wollongong, Dubai, does it prepare you completely or you can further, uh, you know, go ahead and have studies abroad or no need perhaps, Dr. Haley? Yes, I think that's a, a question that is good because it's a question many of our uh, students ask. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing is uh, our degree is internationally recognized. So uh, our engineering degrees are four years and we call it a Bachelor of Engineering Honors Program. So in Australia, you, after you finish this uh, honors degree, you can do a PhD straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the level of the honors degree. Uh, you can go and do research without doing a master's in between. Okay. So our students also are well respected. I mean, I've had students get into Cambridge, into Imperial, mm -hmm. you know, any university you know, schools, in the world, yeah, they can yeah. go straight, you know, it's not an issue, provided they do well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Passing but marks is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where uh, UWD prepares them. Yes, I think. Uh, I mean, the, the other thing is, I mean, we, we, we talk about further education. That's only one route. You also got to remember the practical skills as well and, and the actual course content. Uh, so, for example, we do a lot of project work. So our students do a project work right in the first semester of first year where they look at building a sustainable building. Right. Very important because to us, if we don't lay the foundation of sustainability with our students, the future is at risk. Right. How will they know that they have to do that, right? Yeah. In the first place, guide as well. Yeah, of yes. course, we, we teach Prepare. them the principles of sustainability. Right. So then they understand those principles. And then apply it. Yeah. And apply it. It becomes part of their system, you know. Right. So they, they start. And you can see young people are concerned about the future. And we, we don't want to be seen as people, you're just studying something. No, it's a relevant study. Mm -hmm. You are dealing with all the important issues of the globe. You know, you're dealing with how to reduce energy consumption. You're dealing with how to protect the environment. You're dealing with how to help people, you know, assistive technologies. So these are all relevant. Right. It's a very prestigious degree back home as well, you know, from India and Pakistan as well, you know, to be an engineer. It's something, it is grueling, the experience, <laughs> three years, four years. Uh, but then what you come out of it is amazing. So mechatronics, if I study mechatronics at UOWD, what career will be best suited for me, Dr. Rain? Um, this this question is actually uh, very broad. Uh, the reason is uh, usually people think about if I study mechatronics, I have to be mechatronic engineer. Right. But I will you know, refer back to the T skills. It's uh, a study, a degree uh, wouldn't give you um, you know, something that you can nail uh, such job. Hmm. But the important part is what kind of practical things you involve with. Hmm. For instance, studying only theories would, wouldn't help you to get a job, but whatever you are doing in practical, 
that will give you project-based uh, okay. studies. Okay. So we have also uh, student groups that focus on you know, robotics, uh, student groups focus on AI, mm -hmm. student groups on, on man manufacturing, mm -hmm. and so on. So the question here is, what kind of skills they should be developing based on what kind of interest they have. Nice. So a mechatronic engineer can get you know, jobs in factories building robots, mm -hmm. maintaining robots at the same time. Mm -hmm. They can even get jobs in, uh, in banks. Nice. You, won't, you won't believe, but there are also uh, jobs available advertised specifically look looking for mechatronics engineers. Okay to work for their AI systems. Even in hospitals? Because nowadays Certainly. they're they're doing surgeries with uh, robots and, you know, with those uh, cameras and stuff. I'll take you a step back. Uh, just some time back, Dr. Healy said uh, that, uh, you know, uh, students are very concerned about their future. But at the same time, some of them are very confused. So uh, is there proper uh, counseling and guiding who should be opting for a subject like that and who should not? Before you answer that, uh, we'll just take a quick break and sure. we'll be right back uh, with uh, Dr. Haley Selassie Rajamani and uh, Dr. Rahim Atlu from University of Wollongong, Dubai. Stay with us. SD World Cup Fan Zone is a football fan's paradise at the heart of Dubai Sports City. Oh, how about that? With a dedicated kids area, the adults can enjoy the games on three high definition 4K mega screens while being entertained by DJs and tribute bands. And in the hearts! At the ISD World Cup Fan Zone, everyone is a winner, regardless of the score. Simply sensational, and it might be enough to take them through. Pay 75 dirhams and get a 100 dirham voucher fully redeemable on a wide offering of international F&B options. It's oh, my word! That is quite something! Tickets can be purchased on isdfanzone.com. Unbeatable atmosphere for an unmissable event at the heart of Dubai Sports City. France are the champions of the world! Event powered by Talk 100.3. Game by game, the biggest star-studded world football tournament in Qatar. Goal by goal, this is the World Cup Update on Talk 100.3. Day 2 at the Football World Cup saw England taking a 3-0 lead at halftime. Jude Bellingham, Bukayo Saka and Raheem Sterling put England on the front foot as Iran had a setback early on after their first choice goalkeeper had to be stretchered off after a collision with an England forward. In the second half, Saka completed his brace while Manchester boys Marcus Rashford and Jack Grealish made instant impacts after coming off the bench to seal 6-2 victory. In match 3, rising star Cody Gakpo saved Netherlands blushes as his lone goal around the 85th minute helped the Dutch scrape past a very game Senegal. The match was well and beyond Senegal when Davy Klaassen put the ball past keeper Mendy right at the death. Netherlands won 2-0 against Senegal. In the last game of the day, Wales captain Gareth Bale converted a penalty in the 82nd minute as the Welsh Dragons walked away with a point against a buoyant USA side who were leading by a goal. Final score read USA 1, Wales 1. In today's encounters, we'll see four matches as Messi will lead Argentina against Saudi Arabia at 2 pm, followed by Denmark versus Tunisia at 5 pm. Mexico will lock horns. Mexico will lock horns against Poland at 8 pm. And the last game will see defending champions France take on Australia to start their journey at 11 pm. Stay tuned for all the football action on Talk 100.3. The biggest star-studded world football tournament in Qatar. This is the World Cup Update on Talk 100.3. Talk 100.3. The ICAI Dubai Chapter, the largest overseas chapter of ICAI, will host its 40th annual International Conference 2022 in Dubai with the theme Connect to Impact, Lead, Innovate, Inspire on 27th November at Grand Hayat Exhibition and Conference Center Al Garud from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Focused on sustainable development to enhance growth and create path-breaking impact, the best will gather under one roof to connect and learn innovation and talk of winning leadership approaches to inspire each other for a lasting impact. Supported by Saudi German Health, Pan Emirates, AGMC, Tally, IFCO, Lulu, WMS, CloudSoup, ECAG, UHY James, 
Vested Finance, Crypto, Century Financial, Aktia, Kalich Times, Delhi Private School, Bank of Baroda. For sponsorship inquiries, email on secretary at icaidubai.org. Radio partner, Top 100.3. Waking you up to the UAE's conversation. Talk breakfast with Vivek Sunil and Sobia Khan on Talk 100.3. Very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Aapko remind karwa dein. Every Tuesday we have friends from University of Wollongong, Dubai and of course both the professors. Such a pleasure to have them with us. We are broadening our horizon. Uh, it's a little late but they say it's never too late. Uh, before we head down to the question we last asked, uh, let's address a very interesting question that we have. Uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Haim would like to uh, answer this. Um, Vivek, uh, tell us what you have asked our listeners. So Khan ka message, uh, wonderful show and it's always interesting to listen to the professors i wanted to say that i have done computer engineering but i am doing sales in dubai so what are your thoughts dr rahim and dr haley if your uh, thoughts he has also sent a laughing emoji so <laughs> <laughs> explains we are also sending our laughs to him uh, you know well well then can um as i said you know uh, developing you know such diverse skills as in very important you need to diverse yourself to be able to get uh, a competitive uh, advantage in the job market because it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you are doing something that you have to follow up the same uh, you know discipline patterns but you can be an engineer you can be a ceo mm. you can be an engineer as a sales person as car right. you know uh, as i mentioned earlier so i have mechanical engineering background but also i have business administration degree mm. right. so sometimes you know i need to use that degree uh, the skills that i obtain and sometimes you use engineering degree uh, skills and important part again you know to amalgamate all these learnings into something that you develop your soft skills they become transferable to other fields that you find the job mm. or you create your own job right that's right but it, i think it all depends on you know getting a good offer on a bad day yes. so uh, you have to go for it <laughs> most of the time but again reverting to the question uh, for all those students who are wondering whether it's for them or not dr haley dr rahim what would you like to suggest are there counseling or career guiding yeah. sessions yes i mean i think it, it is very useful for students to actually get advice um i think the worst thing you can get is come into a degree program find it's not for you mm. and then you discover that you're performing less well than you would wow. and then you drop out and then what happens is the consequence of that can be felt for many years mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to identify the person's strength and interest early so that they can then move on the uh, the, the right direction uh but saying that i mean people do change careers uh, sure. so it's not like i don't want to bring bring down any people i've seen people who've come from the medical field into the engineering mm. i've got friends who are medical engineers who went into the medical field so right. it's not like but engineering <laughs> prepares you that way that you can take up anything in this world and you know accomplish it wow. yes i think there there are some skills in engineering that you learn you, you know things like problem solving uh uh things like analysis analytical methods so there are skills that can equip you but i think in terms of career advice uh one thing is we have open days we have some taste sessions not just us but many universities have taste sessions it is worthwhile for the parents to find out what universities are offering to uh, in terms of advice beforehand like at least take the kids to the university for an open day uh we are happy to talk to them we i talk to them one to one and in the universities you know when they come in and say i want to do computer engineering i want to do mechanical engineering you know one to one so they kind of identify that mm -hmm. um one thing in university of wollongong uh dubai our first year for engineering is common okay so they can actually choose some other engineering whatever program whatever specialization you want to go they for they can go in the second year so yeah. there is that flexibility in the Which first year super fantastic it, it's very important because to tell you the truth people have not learned about engineering in schools as much Correct. they are actually new learn to just mug up yeah in school no 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 it's, it's i'm not saying that no 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 no, no please <laughs> X they, plus they, Y, the no, whole square, no, no. X square plus two X. <laughs> no, no. This is what I have learned in my school, without applying it really anywhere. Yeah. No, no, no. I think they learn. The thing is, the fields they learn, they learn maths, physics, geography, chemistry, biology, history. geography. So, I mean, there's a lot of volume there to learn anyway. So it's only when they go to university that they start learning something about new areas, you right, know. Right, so engineering right. is like a new area. If we start talking about very specific parts of engineering, it'll become too difficult for young people to understand. And that's why I say it's good to go for to the universities, visit the universities, question and not only the universities, 
to talk to people who are mm. uh, working in industry. You see, yes. I always encourage them, talk to somebody who is a friend of your dad or mom, you know. Yeah, send a LinkedIn request, yeah. find out. Uh, find out. <laughs> Excellent advice. There's another point as well, apart from, you know, time saving, uh, because the future uh, subjects which are related to the coming generation, the future, the scope that it has, at times it's quite costly as well. So you have to keep that in mind as well, uh, Dr. Healy, Dr. Rahim? Uh, yes, I think... Uh, cost, a subject like this yes. would be uh, different cost-wise from the uh, rest of the subjects? Uh, yes. In general? I think in general, engineering is slightly more costly because, uh, one, uh, we have a lot of laboratories. So in, in if typically in first year, students will be doing every week they do about three or four laboratories practicals and practicals so they're using lab equipment some yeah. of which is very expensive equipment mm. they're using some of the latest robot kits you know we've just been ordering kits for the robots wow. and you can see the cost of that so engineering in a sense is a expensive field uh, in that sense but at the same time uh, they get a very enjoyable experience i mean we have people who say, can I come and do that lab, love, you know, wow. because they see the lab is interesting. <laughs> and Dr. Haley, uh, earlier, like for example, Dr. Rahim has gone all the way to Australia from Turkey. So you save that cost where, you know, your child is away from you and the living cost and things like that. That way, I think it's quite uh, affordable if you compare, you know, leave, letting your child go abroad and uh, while now you have in University of Falgong all this available and all sorted. Yes, I think it is. It is definitely affordable. I mean, in that sense, when you look at a career that is going to span uh, you know, another 30 yeah. years and you're in a, in a field that is expanding, you know, in, in that sense, it's that's why I, say, I tell parents, you know, you've got to think of firstly your, your son's interest or daughter's interest. That's priority number one. Number two, you need to look at the investment and they're here with you in Dubai. So naturally, they're going to be living with you and they can get your supervision and support. Uh, but at the same time, the environment we've created in the university is empowering in, uh, environment. They need to be empowered. They need to feel strong. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that sense, there are you've got to look at the skills they're acquiring. And then the payback comes because of those skills. Mm. Absolutely. I think more, than, so much sense. Yeah. more than the subject knowledge, I think, you know, the way you've explained in terms of skills and everything is fantastic. We would love to know about mechatronics, engineering and computer science, the difference and uh, as both seem to have AI involved in it, if, if I'm right. Um, Yes, that's right. Uh, you know, coming back to you know mechatronics and AI, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are not we are not competing here. Uh, you know, uh, mm. uh, but the the question here is the specialization because yeah. computer computer science they specialize quite you know a range of uh, you know uh, different subjects. You know, AI, machine learning, and data science. These are the you know common terminologies nowadays. You know, getting more and more popular. Mm -hmm. We don't see what's happening behind, you know, apps and web uh, websites and, you know, all these platforms. Right. They're already using these, you know, technologies and, uh, you know, techniques. Mm -hmm. But, you know, mechatronics is another discipline, as I said, uh, as an interdisciplinary discipline, using, utilizing AI to do some other applications. Okay. So as an engineering degree, basically, we build things mm -hmm. and utilize other tools from different disciplines. Correct. So AI is only one application area. Mm. So computer science can focus on more deep in uh, computing areas, uh -huh. but AI is only one uh, subtopic in, the, right. in that area. So metaverse yes. is what wow. uh, is the next movie coming up? <laughs> that's that's that's, an, that's, an, that's another area actually. You know, of, uh, we'll yes. do all that on the moon in 2030. You know, because that's the we, plan. We have we have 2D uh, internet uh, using you know displays, our phones, smartphones, tablets, uh, computers, so on. But now uh, 3D uh, internet is coming. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for the good news and the exciting one as well. Now, how, uh, what is the right time, you know, to get involved with, uh, uh, with the faculty, uh, come and talk to them, do the counseling and take it forward, uh, take it from there? Uh, is so, it, you know, do, we, do we still have time or it's going to be next year now? Uh, what would you suggest? I think I would suggest anyone out there has any interest, mm -hmm. please directly contact us. Our okay. website is there. You can basically Google and find out uh, who are the academics, you know, what they are teaching. And we are open people to, you know, 
to meet with people, communicate with people out there. As Haley mentioned, uh, we have open days, we have engineering camps, and they need to come and have the taste. Mm -hmm. We have this mm -hmm. you know, uh, first year uh, common for all in, across engineering disciplines. That's mm -hmm. another very good thing uh, for students. You don't need to make your mind. So this is how we communicate out there, saying you don't need to feel the pressure to select your discipline mm -hmm. after you know immediately jumping out of the uh, high school. Okay. Now come and have a taste, mm -hmm. and then you will see how you will develop. And I'm sure that you or WDK website will be able to you'll get all the information. But quickly, we got a couple of questions, so let's try to uh, address them. How is the job market for Megatronics? What percentage of engineers are already performing duties globally? The thing is, the moment we talk about education, I mean, we only think of, you know, job, but yeah, that's, that's the survival okay. question. I think it's an important question of how many of our students are working in engineering. And I, I was fairly surprised, firstly, that a lot of our graduates work in the UAE. Uh, and this is, I mean, looking at the analysis of electrical engineers, uh, telecommunication engineering looks like more in the future dr healy yes yeah that's <laughs> uh, and i think the reason for this is to do with uh, industry 4.0 the government's objectives to make dubai a center so we are seeing more people getting employed straight away into uh, engineering fields in the uae itself uh, but also abroad it's not just here abroad also there's been a sudden increase in interest in people who can actually tackle the kind of modern engineering, you know. Mm -hmm. So there is a demand rising. Uh, in terms of uh, mechatronics itself, I think I'll ask my colleague to talk about it because we are starting mechatronics here my, in Australia. Mechatronics has been there for a very long time and is very popular. Okay. So just ask my colleague. Mr. Yeah. Colleague, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, this is uh, how we communicate again, you know, engineering discipline and especially mechatronics uh, in Australia, saying that uh, we have lots of practicals and labs uh, that we uh, facilitate our mm -hmm. uh, students to have their hands-on skills, mm -hmm. transferable skills that they can apply to anywhere within industry, uh, not especially for engineering sub uh, subjects and disciplines. But also in other, you know, uh, you know, jobs like Khan mentioned, sure. he's a salesperson. Now he's certainly applying his uh, engineering degree there. And now we are establishing uh, Mechatronics UOWD in Dubai, right here in UAE. We will have all these facilities, but we are coming up with some brand new frontier mechatronics uh, equipment already being ordered at the moment oh, wow. and uh, I'm a little jealous to be honest <laughs> not to be an, uh, not to be a student yeah but I will have at least uh, you know but you'll have the first hand opportunity experience. to play with these uh, a little experience you're leading boys. from the front Dr. Ah. Rahim so yes you're part of it big time gentlemen thank you so much and before we let you go you said you're very accessible of course in the vicinity in the premises but otherwise on social media if, you know people would like to follow you you and stay abreast uh, with you know how it's going on social media with you uh, is it possible certainly you know I have LinkedIn Twitter Twitter is a bit uh, <laughs> yeah. yes uh, nowadays. Uh, arguably, yeah. Yeah, have you paid eight dollars yeah. yet or no <laughs> 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 to get the blue tick <laughs> okay we won't ask that yeah. so uh, Twitter with uh, Dr. Rahim same name Dr. Rahim Motlu yeah, it's they can search on Twitter. They can easily find it. Sure. Yes. And Dr. Healy? Uh, I'm more on LinkedIn, okay. uh, so they can find me on LinkedIn. And, uh, but, you know, I'll, I'll start using Twitter as well a bit. Yay! We're just getting <laughs> onto it. We are late to the party. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much once again. Uh, of course, uh, University of Wollongong, Dubai. Uh, all the details are on the website. But such a pleasure this morning to have you face-to-face uh, -face and talking and discussing about great and bright future uh, for our upcoming generation. Thank you once again. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you. This is Talk 100.3. BBC Minash with Stephen and Andrew. The lives of 10 million Ukrainians will be under threat from next month. That's according to the World Health Organization. It says they're currently without power after Russian strikes destroyed half the country's energy supplies. The organization has also verified more than 700 attacks on medical facilities since Russia's invasion began. To China, where state media say criminal suspects have been taken into custody after a fire in a factory in Henan province killed 36 people. Twitter boss Elon Musk says the platform added one 
1.6 million daily active users this past week. Meanwhile, the head of Apple's App Store is the latest high-profile figure to deactivate his account. It comes after a former Twitter executive warned that the social network risked being pulled out of Apple.